Hey guys, and welcome back to episode 4 of this Monaco FIFA 17 career mode. And we've got a testing episode today. We're definitely going to be presented with our first real test because we're going to be taking on a team that will definitely be up there or thereabouts come the end of the season. We've got PSG at home. And then the second game is not much easier either because we travel away to Lille. And they are a team that are capable of winning the league title for sure. Um, you can see our Champions League group. We've got Juventus. That'll be coming up in the first game of the next episode. Arsenal are in our group as well. Along with Borussia Mönchengladbach. So it is a little bit of a group of, group of death. And it's going to take some skill to get out of that group. But I've been reading your comments before this episode. And that has... Led to me updating the shortlist, so to speak. There's a lot of players that were constantly mentioned. None more so than this man, Kurt Zuma. Obviously, he is French. He is young. He is a centre-back. He's got a lot of potential, which is exactly what we're looking for. So I'm going to scout him a little bit further. Other additions to the shortlist were mainly attacking options. Yannick Carrasco, obviously very established. Team of the season, I do believe, in terms of ultimate team. He had a very good year for Atletico Madrid. Justin Cliver, who we did have on the Swansea career mode, but very rarely played. He was just a backup player, and I know we can get him in for probably less than 2 million. He's 17, could go on to be a key player for us. And then also added was Lautaro Martinez um, from Racing Club. I don't know much about him. You guys seem to think he's decent, so I've added him to the shortlist. He's just 18, so I'm going to scout him. And Andre Silva also added. I know a bit more about him. 20-year-old striker from Porto, as it says on the screen there. Very quick. Could be another real threat for us. So in terms of attacking options, we've got a lot more now. I asked you guys about Sebastian Haller. Haller, whatever you pronounce it as. Some of you said, yes, I've had him. He's a bit of a beast. Others said, I had him. He was quite poor. So I'm sitting on the fence with that one. We're going to turn our attention to the other guys. And if they're unsuccessful, maybe we'll go back in for this guy. Speaking of transfers, we've got an email. And our bid for Gelson Martins of 25 million has been accepted. Excuse me. He wants 20 grand a week. Happy to give him that for four years. You guys, I always do a gold bonus. People say, why? Uh, I'm going to take it out. You, you always question it. I don't know why I do it. I think it's just like the icing on the cake for the player. But I'll give him his demands for now. Hopefully he can come in because a lot of you guys were keen to see him join. Well, other teams are trying to steal our deals. That Mitch and Gladbach, who are in our Champions League group, as I mentioned, have gone in for Gelson Martins, gone over the top of our bid. So it's just a case of who the player decides to join. I might go back in and offer him some more money just to make sure we get him. And then Andre Silva, who's added to our shortlist. Porto have accepted a £15.5 million bid from Schalke. I can't just sit back and let other teams hijack our deals. I'm not about that life. We're going to go in with, I don't know where I'm going over there, a £16 million bid. So just going slightly over the top of Schalke for Andre Silva. Hopefully Porto will accept that. And then I'm just going to offer this guy 27500 I know it's a lot more than what he wants and I'll, I'll do the goal bonus as well. Just to try and make sure he makes the right decision and joins us here at Monaco. Loads and loads of emails then. Andre Silva we cannot get now. He, Schalke have beat us to it, basically. Porto saying they're not going to accept our offer because they've accepted one from another team. Does that mean that... Oh, yeah, the deal is done. We were too late on that front, which is a bit annoying. But our bid for Ginter, £14 million, has been accepted. So I'm going to keep that going. But I think Kurt Zuma, judging by your comments, would be the preference. So I'm going to turn a bid in for him as well. Let's just read the rest of those emails. Perfect. That's what we needed. Gelson Martins is going to become our second major sign-in here. You guys want him in. You say he's great. I haven't used him, and I'm hoping he will be as good as you guys make out. Welcome to the club. I don't know how much Zuma normally goes for. I can't scout him because the scouts are busy. I'm not going to send an inquiry because they ask for like that much more than what the players actually valued out. I'm just going to chuck a bid in of 10 mil, see what they say. Another player that was mentioned quite a bit is Christian Eriksen from Spurs. I tried to get him many times in the Swansea career mode, and then we ended up signing other players. Ericsson is on the radar. He's on the radar. I'm not going to make any offers or anything as yet, but it's up there. Okay, so the scout in, in Brazil has finished. We found all we can. I'll have a look at the players that they've recommended in a minute. Chelsea have rejected our £10 million bid because they think Zuma is worth more than that. I tend to agree with them. I'm going to offer 14 this time, same as what we've offered for Ginter, who has declined our contract offer. So I'm going to leave that... Leave that aside for now. If we don't get Zuma for whatever reason, 
I'll go back in for this guy. So Chelsea have told us now what they want for Zuma. 23 and a half million. That is Euros. So that's not that bad a deal. I am still going to try and undercut them a little bit by offering 17 and a half. See if we can sort of meet them halfway. And there we go. That is the email I was hoping for. Chelsea have agreed to meet us halfway. Zuma is saying give me 100,000 euros a week. I'm saying okay, Kurt, because you would be an important first team player for us and one for the future as well. That is not what I need. That is basically saying give me more money. I could be persuaded. Fine. Fine. We can do that. We've got the money. We've got the budget to do it. I'm not going to offer a lot. Clean sheet bonus I will give him. And let's make him a crucial first team player. See if that will just persuade him enough. So I have no doubt this will be the toughest game of our season so far. We're taking on PSG. I've gone with a 4-2-2-2 formation. Because I want to go for it. We've got home advantage. Martins makes his debut. He's going to be wearing the number 13 shirt for the remainder of this season. And then next summer, depending on how well he does, we'll give him a new squad number. But look at this star-studded PSG side. They've not come here to defend. 4-3-3 formation. Falcao. Oh, nice ball to Fabinho. Should have played that on one more. That completely opened up from Mbappe. But I opted to hit it. Bad mistake. Here is Di Maria making strides on the right-hand side. Oh, he's cut inside beautifully. He's into the box. Don't want to foul him. He's crossed it in. Thiago Motta brings it down well. The s oh, can you believe that? Subasic saved the first effort. As I went to clear the ball out wide, we hit our own man with the clearance. It fell perfectly to Edinson Cavani, who was never going to miss from there. I was just trying to play it away from danger. And ugh, shambolic. Oh, Martins, it's the first time he's got on the ball. Oh, lovely footwork. What's he going to do here? He cuts back onto his right foot. Fabinho gives it back to Martins. Works it inside and he's hit the post. What a debut goal that would have been. How unlucky for the new guy. Good effort. Oh, great challenge, Fabinho. Falcao gets there. Gets absolutely mullered and has stayed down injured. I'm just looking for the right pass to play. And we found Martins who's into the box. Can he get a debut goal? Saved again by Trap and cleared away by Thiago Silva. We've got men down all over the pitch. Who's that? I think it's Yuri Tillemans, is it? No, it's still Falcao. He never recovered. Now, this is awkward because Carrillo, not really up to scratch, but it would be a direct replacement for Falcao. I could play Lamar up top, just thinking what to do here. Or what I'm going to do is change the formation a little bit. If I bring Jan Moutinho on, who's very creative, very capable of playing in a game of this magnitude, putting him in at Cam and playing Mbappe as a striker, by himself. Moutinho just behind him. That gives us... It's a bit of a 4-2-3-1 formation now, but very threatening still. Lamar knocks the ball inside to Yuri Tillemans. The stretch play to the right-hand side. And Martins is... It's Mbappe. He's make, no, it's not. It's Martins who's making a run. Cuts back onto his right foot. Good effort. He is lively. He is very, very lively. Oh, that's a good ball. Sadibi plays it on one more to Gelson Martins. Got Thiago Silva to beat, and he's done it with ease. Cuts it back. Sadibi, the right back, saved by Trap, but it falls to Lamar. And he absolutely puts his laces through it. Almost breaks the net and thumps us level. Great play again from Martins. It was cut back to Sadibi, who had a good effort. Parried well away by Trap, but it fell straight to the feet of Lamar. On his favoured left foot, he was never going to miss that. It's Krakowiak, finds Cavani. And Kel Di Maria, very tricky. Back to Cavani. Di Maria continues his run. I'm just trying to cut out the space. Cavani with a nice back heel. The shot comes in. It's very well blocked. Matuidi finds Cavani. We're taking it off him. Chance to counter-attack is ended by the referee's half-time whistle. Here is Lucas. Oh, it's a really good ball to the right-hand side. Di Maria cuts it back. Dinks it to the back post. And Cavani is that far away from getting his head on the end of it. Sadibi chips the ball over the top. Gelson Martins with a chance to show his pace and stretch his legs. Couldn't really take it in his stride. He's still got there. He's battling with the defender. That must be a foul. No, but Martins comes away with the ball. He's going to cut it back. It's Fabino, lay it off. First time hit. Oh, that's pathetic. That was a real lack of composure. It's all PSG at the moment. Not a lot of clear-cut chances, but a hell of a lot of possession. Di Maria plays it back to Krakowiak. Good strength. Slides it through to Verratti, who's come off the substitute bench. To put PSG back in front. I'm a bit disappointed with the goalkeeper there. I'm going to have to look at the replay. Felt like he shouldn't have been beaten from that angle. I know it was hit with a lot of power. Defending here was poor. Look at that. Lack of strength. But the first time here, Subasic got to do better. Really got to do better in my opinion. 2-1 PSG. 
Here is Maxwell down this left-hand side. Men in the box for PSG. It's a great ball. It's 3-1. It's possibly game over with just 20 minutes left. Krikoviak with a really good header. Look, there's no danger at this point, but the defenders just let him run. They let him run. Fabinho finds Mbappe. Turns. Gives it to Yamutinho. Back to Mbappe, who's been quiet. Oh, it's good footwork, though. He's into the box. He's brought down. Penalty. Thiago Silva couldn't resist the challenge. And we've got a chance to get ourselves back into this. Really good footwork, look. Just tiptoed his way through. Thiago Silva already stumbling. Stuck out a leg. No question about whether it was a penalty or not. And Fabinho's not going to be the man to take it, I don't think. Actually, yes, he is. Apparently, his penalty taking ability is superb. Oh, oh. You don't save those. You literally don't save those. That's one of the best penalties I've ever taken. 3-2. Still more than 15 minutes left. Game on. And I've got to watch a replay of that. Wouldn't normally watch a replay of penalties, but... Oh. Martins plays the ball forward. Here is Yao Moutinho. Martins finds Mbappe. Moutinho chips it over the top. Mbappe's made a run. Trap stays on his line. Angles against Mbappe. And it was always going to be with a first touch like that. What was he doing? One thing we do have, though, is a corner. It's going to be whipped in. The oh, what a header. What a header. Yao Moutinho, one of the smallest men on the pitch. What a header. Great delivery. But look at that. Trap didn't even move. Cavani, oh, he skipped past Glick, who hasn't got the pace to get back, I don't think. Cavani could put a cross in, he has, and Verratti snatched at the chance. Already scored one, could have got another. Both teams absolutely going for this now. What an absolute game this has been. Six goals already, and it's wide open, because neither side wants to draw this. They are both attacking. Anything could happen. We're into stoppage time, so if it's going to happen, it's got to happen now. PSG just smack it forward, Maxwell... Finds Cavani. What a challenge. No, he's given a free kick. We're deep, deep into stoppage time now. They're not going to take it quickly. They're not going to rush it. They know this is the final opportunity to win this game. And it's Cavani standing over it. Dinks it into the box. What a waste. Going to smack it clear. Full time whistle goes. Absolute scenes in this game. Brilliant game. Brilliant spectacle. It's finished 3 3. Good news. And bad news. The good news is Kurt Zuma has accepted our contract offer and will become the latest addition to what is becoming a very strong squad now. Welcome to the club, Kurt. Love that. The bad news is it's a dislocated shoulder for Falcao, our captain. He's going to be out for eight weeks. That is not what we need with the European games coming up. As if there hasn't been enough excitement in this episode already with big signings and that epic six-goal thriller against PSG, we've now got the small matter of transfer deadline day. I'm not expecting... A lot from our side, though. We've assembled a good squad. Might be some small deals, but not expecting anything major. I did send an inquiry about Justin Clivert, though, and Ajax have said they're not interested in discussing his availability, so we have to respect their wishes and leave that alone. Racing Club or Racing Club have asked for eight and a half million euros for Martinez, who was heavily suggested. Going to offer, going to offer five. I don't know that much about him. I'm sure they'll send a counter offer if they they're not happy with that bid. So that's up to them. And Kevin and Durham is subject to a transfer bid from Lazio. He's 65 rated at 20 years old. Probably not going to get a lot of game time. I'm going to accept that. It just frees up space in the squad for us to bring in another cheap alternative or a youth player to come through the ranks. So and Durham has gone. That deal has been completed. And they're sticking with their guns. Eight and a half million pound euro, uh, eight and a half million euros. For Martinez, so I'm, I'm going to offer it. You guys are keen to bring him in. You said he's very, very underrated. Let's do it. There you go. The bid has been accepted. His wage demands are very low, really, for a club of our size. You'd expect to be playing, paying players more than €15,000 a week. I'm not sure if he'd make the first team, though. We've got Mbappe. We've got Falcao, who is injured, of course. Um, we do have other options, so I'll offer him rotation at first. But that didn't take long. That was probably the swiftest deal I've ever done on FIFA. Maxi asking price, offer the contract, player accepts. We've got ourselves a new young striker. But that's pretty much it for deadline day. We've got an hour left, no time to do any more business. You can see Tillemans, Martins, Zuma and Martinez are the players that we've brought in. £71 million pound, or million euros, keep saying pounds, is our total spend. A lot of departures, £79.5 million euros raised. So pretty good business. I'm not going to go through all of the transfers that have happened because it's pretty scripted, as you guys know. So a cheeky youth update on the players that we put into the academy. And Saudi, his overall is 44, potential now of 88. And Victor Velasquez, the more interesting of the two. 
Potential between 71 and 93. Overall is higher at 50. So I'll keep my eye on him especially. So second game of this episode now as we travel to Lille. Obviously going to be another tough test. They're lining up with a 4-2-3-1 formation. Yassine Benzia, that is a throwback from my old streams. He was my go-to guy. I know he's very dangerous. This is the starting 11 I've gone with. Going back with the four, to the 4-4-2 uh, four, four, formation, I should say. Debut for Kurt Zuma as Jameson drops to the bench. And Martinez comes in, makes his debut for the injured Falcao. Ball is played forward. Kurt Zuma into action for the first time. Really good challenge. That's, he's got so much pace, strength, and his tackling ability is amazing. I'm really pleased we managed to sign him. Oh, Mavuba plays the ball in. Yassin Benzia. Oh, Glick has missed the interception. And Mavuba smashes it into the bottom corner. 20 minutes in and we're behind here in Lille. It all come from Glick. It was, that was a bit sloppy, but oh, he was kind of wrong-footed. Here is Martins. We come forward looking for an immediate response. Here is Martinez. Nice one too with Yao Moutinho. He slips it through. Could be level immediately. And Bappe fires us level. Did not take long, did it? Nearly 23 minutes gone. It's 1-1. Set for another goal fest. Really good build-up play. Nice ball through. And one touch is all Mbappe needed. Moutinho wins possession back. Here is Mbappe looking to release his strike partner. His new strike partner, Martinez. Finds Martins. Mbappe's in the box. Cross comes in. He can't get on the end of it. But Lamar will pick up the ball at the back stick. Cuts it back, Mendy. Anybody else? And you feel that may have been a goal. We've got a free kick, which Lamar looks very interested in. Looking to go up and around the wall. He's gone around it. He's gone low. And, and Yima. Is that how you say it? I don't even know. He's very famous. I should know how to say his name. He's got down really well. And tipped that round the post. A little bit more power. And we'd have been 2-1 up. Corner. Going to play this one short. Martins. Lamar, Bakayoko, oh, the ball's gone loose. Falls to Martinez, takes a touch, sets himself. It's another good save. And I'm glad the offside flag's gone up because that was a shot on goal and it went about 50 yards backwards. Half-time whistle goes. We're going to go in all square. Both goals scored in the early stages of this half, but we've definitely been the better side. Just haven't found that second goal yet. Lamar into Martinez, back to Lamar, back to Mbappe. Can he finish and put us in front? You bet he can. You bet he can. This guy is a finisher. Straight after half-time, we've got the lead. That was quick, sharp passing. Lovely link-up between Martinez and... I don't know who the other guy was. I can't remember, but Mbappe's finish. Superb. Bakayoko wins possession back. Here is Martinez. Looks to release Mbappe, who, of course, is on a hat-trick now. He cuts it back. Going to lay this off. Unselfishly for Jan Moutinho. Just toe-poked it. Didn't get a decent connection at all. Kishner, who's come on off the bench. Very threatening. He's got three down this left-hand side as well. Glick desperately trying to catch him. Not going to do that. Zuma, cool as you like. And Subasic with a really good volleyed clearance. Here is Yassine Benzia. Bakayoko breaking up play, which is what he's known for. But still, the danger's not cleared. Here is Andre. Hits the shot. Deflects. Could loop in. Oh, that caused Subasic and problems. Again, Lille come forward. Here is Palmieri. Oh, he's turned nicely. There's a man down in the box. Gelson Martins doesn't care. He's robbed the ball and he is away. Has he got the pace to go through? He could do. Could go all the way. What a solo goal this would be. I think he's just run out of steam. He's run out of stamina. Oh, keeper taking a big chance, though. What a risk. Here's Bakayoko. He's got a runner on the right. It's Martins. Takes a touch. Hits the shot. It's a good one. It's a good save. Going to be drilled back across goal. Nothing's going to come of it, though, and Lille will escape. As they go forward looking for an equaliser, we're starting to find space in behind their defence. Here is Kishna, comes forward. He's got past his man again, puts the ball in. But Kurt Zuma, right place at the right time. More good defending on his debut. Lille coming forward. They haven't given up hope yet. They've got a lot of bodies there now. There's a run through the middle. I thought the pass was coming, so I just tried to block it. Shot comes in. Weird trajectory. Took a deflection. It's going to be a corner. Into stoppage time. This will be the final opportunity for Lille. Bakayoko trying to break up play once more. Kishna. Plays the ball. Oh, it's lovely link-up play. Really fast-flowing football. They got in behind here. Fabinho. Oh, Sadibi even had to get there. And that could be a match-winning tackle. And it is. Full-time whistle's gone. We've hung on despite that late pressure. And we've got the win here in Lille. Big three points. Just looking at the latest loot. You. Just looking at the latest youth scout report. There's a couple of players on who I'm interested in. Ramon Saavedra. I'm going to add to the academy. We've got some other players with some good potential, but low overalls. But this guy, Sergio Moreno, looks decent. 
16 years old, Spanish, left-footed. We're going to bring him in as well. We're going to grow that academy and see if we can bring them through throughout this series. So that is where I'm going to end this episode, guys. It's been an episode full of transfers, full of goals, and hopefully you guys have been entertained by that. We end it in second place, although Stad Rene could leapfrog us and Leon if they were to win their game in hand. Leon obviously sit top, as you can see, Marseille, and then Lille are fourth and fifth. PSG down in eighth place, but they have got a game in hand and could jump up as high as fourth if they were to win it. But do please drop a like, guys, if you've been entertained. The channel is growing so fast right now. I think it's the fastest it's grown since I started it. And that's all down to you guys interacting and liking and sharing the video. So thank you so much, as always, for all your support. Do please subscribe if you are new around here so you don't miss any future episodes. But for now, I will see you guys next time.